Hi everybody, Steve Rolston here at Watercolor Westport. I'm the founder of Landark Homes. And in this video, what we want to talk about is the furnace. So we're going to hand it over to Gord Cook, who is going to explain to us this high efficiency, cold climate, air source heat pump. So it's otherwise known as a heat pump and Gord. And right, uh, right off the bat, Steve, really interesting for us to understand heat pump, right? This isn't a tr traditional furnace. You're not seeing a gas line, not seeing a gas vent. This is runoff mm. electricity, or that's its primary fuel. But more importantly, it's actually pumping heat, finding heat from outside, bringing it in. And these appliances are 300% efficient. That is, for every dollar of electricity you buy, you get $3 worth of heat out of this box. And people immediately go, well, electricity is expensive. Well, right now it is, but more importantly, when you're in a net zero ready house, you can go ahead and put solar panels on your house. Now, now you're not having to buy the electricity, you're making your own electricity. And we know, as we talked previously in terms of sustainability, we really have to mm -hmm. stop burning fossil fuels in houses. But most importantly, if you think about the super insulated, super tight concept, We've reduced the heat loss, heat gains of this house. We've put in super amounts of insulation. We've made the house really tight. So we actually don't need a very big heating system or a very big cooling system. So you get that benefit. You're off of fossil fuels. You are very low heating and cooling costs and you're at 300% efficiency. And lastly, you're set up for the future when you're making your own electricity off solar panels. Now your bills are free. And one of the interesting things about these furnaces is uh, they run in the coldest, maybe 10 days of the winter when it's below minus 30 degrees. Uh, this basically five or 10 kilowatt toaster oven up top is the auxiliary or backup form of heat. One of our other consultants, Al Trellis from Home Builders Network, he wrote an article in Popular Science in 1973 mm -hmm. saying the only thing that was gonna save the planet was everybody switching their home over to a heat pump. But in those days, they didn't have cold climate air source heat pumps. So can you explain a little bit the difference between an air source heat pump, a regular one of 40, 50 years ago, and the cold climate ones today? Exactly the point, you're quite right. When Al was speaking of that, he was thinking about you know Tennessee, the Carolinas, where it didn't get that cold. What happened in Canada is when you gets that cold, the heat pumps would freeze up. And, and you couldn't get reliable heat in cold weather and you had to go to straight electric backup, which again at the time was really expensive. What's really cool over the ensuing 40 years, we have new technologies. We have variable compressors, variable refrigerant compressors, compressors, sorry, um, and we have variable speed motors that manage the flow of energy through these coils much better. And so now they are rated down to minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit, so they'll continue to run. That's about, what, minus 25 uh, Celsius, and you said the last couple of days of the year now are to back up. But most importantly, they're still working. That plant's still working, even in that very coldest of weather. And some are gonna say, well, that sounds too new. Well, interesting. We've been doing this cold climate heat pump for at least five to 10 years, and there's an independent body that test those, it's called NEEP, it's out of Vermont actually, that tests and certifies that in fact they do work even at those very extreme temperatures. And then we should look at sort of the how this is installed. What we want to think about is the air coming from the house, the return air, it's going to pass through the filter that we're all familiar with. So about once a month or so you're going to check that, make sure that's clean. The air is then coming up and the first piece it goes through is the heat pump coil. That's its primary heat. So it selects that first. I love Love the way this has been installed properly so that I get a really good consistent airflow pattern through this box uh, and that makes the, the heat pump coil that much more efficient. This is the blower motor that people would normally see, this incredibly quiet, incredibly efficient furnace fan motor and then only when needed it goes through that, you called it toaster element, I'm okay with that, electrical re resistant coil and then up into the ductwork. So really nice configuration specifically designed, I'm going to say in the Canadian context, we want that heat pump coil first before it gets to the fan. Many people are familiar with an air conditioner that's sitting up here, but in heating and cooling mode, it's actually best for it to be here. So a really nice configuration. Your mechanical guy's done an outstanding job. Some of the people coming in also are very concerned that we're heating with electricity and they're not aware of the intended fossil fuel taxes that will eventually make natural gas consistent with electricity in just maybe seven to 10 years. 
So, Gord, could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's very clear. The, you know, globally, and this isn't just a Canadian thing because some people say, well, this is politics. It's not politics. We really need to understand that, you know, that blue flame that we used to in natural gas or propane, great product. We needed it in the early days because we had these huge heating loads. We don't have the huge heating loads anymore. And all we're really trying to do is get houses to 20 degrees Celsius. We don't need that 2,500 degrees Celsius blue flame to get us to 20. Heat pumps are much more uh, useful way of using uh, energy. And remember, again, the most efficient of gas furnaces are 98% for every dollar of gas you buy, you get 98 cents worth of heat. This box, remember, for every dollar of electricity you buy, you get three to four dollars worth of energy. And if you're thinking that's magic, it's not. It's heat pump technology. It's no different than the way your refrigerator runs, your air conditioner runs. It just runs in a reverse mode, heat pump mode. So we have a reliable product that's really designed for now and the future. Al was quite right. Should have been doing this 40 years ago. Didn't really have the technology here in Westport or in Canada. Now we have the technology. Now we have houses that can accept that technology. Key point. Tough to do in an older home, can be done, but when you've done all the work that you've done, super insulated, super tight, this is a really nice approach to get through to the future. 10 years from now, everybody will be doing heat pumps. What a shame if you bought a house today and didn't have the right appliance and you had to switch it out 10, 15 years from now. So again, great job by Valley and, and you guys for being forward thinking enough to, to get these systems installed. And Gord, next, could you talk to people about how it pumps heat? How it pumps heat. Yeah, it's an interesting one, right? So let's think about outside. And people say, well, there's no heat outside. Well, there is, in fact. You know, if, if I said it's minus 10 out, is there still some heat on that air? Yes. If I take minus 10 degree air, pass it through the refrigerant coil, it has the ability through the magic of refrigeration, has the ability to extract another 10 degrees Celsius out of that air. It puts it into the refrigerant, pumps that refrigerant in here, and releases that heat, that 10 degrees Celsius of air here. Maybe it's 15, 20 degrees Celsius. So it's extracting heat from the outside air and, and simply concentrating it, running it through the refrigerant coil and releasing it in the same way that your air conditioner works, right? In the summertime, people say it's not cold outside. No, but you can take heat out of that air, sorry, put heat into that air and take heat out of it here in the air conditioning coil. All we're doing is flipping that around. This is basically an air conditioner with a switching valve that says switch modes. Instead of taking heat from the house, add heat to the house. And Al Trellis was the one who introduced me to this idea that even just using a heat pump the way it is what he says the fuel for these things is is basically solar heated air Attaboy. like forget the panels you know the solar panels like someone's gonna you know achieve that and want to go to be a full net zero home but what we're doing is building net zero ready homes now can you touch to the fact that uh, the solar heated air is the fuel. Yeah, exactly. When when you think about air outside, even at minus 10, there's still some heat in it. Where did that heat come from? Came from the sun, stored around the earth or in, in the atmosphere around the earth. So we're using that as best we can. Again, rather than extracting a fuel from the ground that's been there for uh, millions of years and using it up, we're saying there's a renewable energy that every spring, every fall is rejuvenated on the outside. So it's a, a very uh, responsible way of using energy appropriately in our house. And lastly, Gord, uh, where do you think energy costs will be for natural gas in seven to 10 years? It's, it's well written that within 10 years, the, the stated goal is that the price of natural gas per unit of energy is going to be the same as the price of electricity. So in a short seven to 10 years. And where is that stated? Uh, these are uh, federal policies, uh, the, the carbon tax policies that we've committed to, frankly, as a nation at a global level. Let's say it's not really a politics thing. It's something that we've committed to as a country, all of us committed to, that we will ensure that um, th there isn't a price uh, signal, if you will, that encourages people to use uh, one fuel over another.